on the week, Mikey. How yield curve inversions affect stocks. I think this is a popular one for a lot of people. The consensus, kind of like if you just Google this idea, um, what'll come up is, oh, it's usually a negative sign for the economy and yada, 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 and stocks tend to fall. And I wanted to look through some of the data here, Mikey, to confirm for people how a yield curve inversion might affect their equity positions or the stock market at large. Let's start with just talking about what an inversion is and how this benchmark of the two-year versus the 10-year, um, it can help people to see that that price of zero is uh, the inversion line. And now that we're in a negative pricing on that spread, we are inverted. Maybe give people a little background, Mikey, on what a yield curve inversion is and uh, how this chart is showing us that we are currently inverted. Sure. Yeah. So typical yield curve most days is upward sloping, meaning that longer dated fixed income instruments like two years, 10 years, 30 years, the longer the duration, the higher the interest rate. What we're seeing with a yield curve inversion is when longer term rates are actually less than shorter term rates. So imagine a kind of flipping of the essence where two year rates now are higher than 10 year rates. And what we've plotted here is just the simple difference between the small 10 year US Treasury yield future and the small two year US Treasury yield future. That bottom right hand corner on the graphic is zero, meaning that the difference between the two is now negative. So two years are greater than 10 years. And you're uh, kind of feeling that this is generally a negative uh, barometer for economic health and stock market activity is exactly how I've viewed it historically. It's like the technical analyst death cross. It's like, doesn't happen very often, but when it does, a recession always follows or something along those lines. So I'm really excited to hear and, and look at some of the data that you put together today relating these yield curve inversions with actual stock market activity. But all it is is a difference between those rates changing, either being positive or negative. Absolutely. And here you can see it in a different way. This is a visual of the current yield curve up there at top and the yield curve of just a year ago today uh, down there at bottom. And like Mikey says, normal yield curve, what we had a year ago um, was upward sloping. The, the, the lesser the duration, the less time I might loan you uh, money or take out a loan, the, the lower the interest rate usually on that item. And obviously, these these are US uh, Treasury interest rates, and they're the benchmark for everything, for you know mortgage, car loan, what have you. And so you can think of it on that practical level. Oh, yeah, you know, lesser time, lesser interest rate. As I get from in that one year ago yield curve, Mikey, as I go from one to two years out to five to 10 years, I'm jumping from, you know, zero to 50 basis points to 100 basis points to 200 basis points. As I go out in time, I'm adding you know, a percentage point to my interest rate. It's simplified, but that's how you can kind of think of it. I'm jumping from one or two years to five or 10 years, I'm adding a percentage point. I go out to 30 years, I'm adding another percentage point. Now, what you're seeing with the current yield curve, completely flat, almost from A to Z, but you actually see a hump there in the middle, whereby two-year and five-year rates are actually now exceeding 10-year rates. And so the interest rate for lesser duration, higher than medium to longer term duration, and that's where you get that flat inverted uh, talk that everybody is talking these days. And I, I like this comparison. I mean, and this is that year ago is where we normally are. And even think about it, last year, we're still in the midst. I mean, we still are in the midst, but we're even heavier in the midst of the pandemic. And we still have a, a relatively normal Yield curve, uh, nine years out of 10, will have that upward sloping yield curve. And that's why it becomes such an interesting trade. And here are now the last, we look at just a year's worth of data. Now, here's the last 22 years worth of data, Mikey, going back to the year 2000. Um, and maybe you can speak to uh, the last three inversions. And now, as of today, we're in that fourth. Mm, yeah, it's nice to have a little bit of context here. Uh, just real quick, look at these locations of where yield curve inversions happened. 
and tie them to kind of historical events maybe around that period. I wasn't trading in <laughs> the year 2000. I was just a youngin, but this is the tech bubble, right? This is the IPO boom in the, in the tech crush, crush right around that area. 2007, 2008, big financial crash, big recession. That's another inversion. Uh, 2019, 2020, that's COVID, right? That's like these kind of fearful events spawned yield curve inversions. But what's so interesting about this graphic is how quickly we go inverted and how quickly we come back. Yeah. What is kind of a normal level or a normal difference in rates between those short and medium or longer term durations. Yeah, a- absolutely. Um, that's even in the longer, like in, in 2019, you are witnessing a yield curve that was inverted for literally three days. Like you can ask some, I asked Tom Sosnoff when the last inversion was, and he said, oh, 2007, 2008, because he doesn't even, it was like a flash. Mm-hmm. And a, a lot of people maybe didn't even write about it or talk about it or know it happened, but quick turnaround. But then in 2000 and 2007, there, um, a little bit longer, a few months inverted going back and forth. But then, yeah, a ri- eventually a rip back to a normal yield curve there. And we're right now in the midst of that fourth inversion. We'll see how long we spend down here. Could be a few days, could be a few months. Um, But what is interesting um, is you correlate all of those inversions, Mikey, to the S&P 500 here uh, for the last couple of decades. And the stock market, the biggest falls that we've seen in the last couple of decades are on the heels of these inversions. Now, the biggest the biggest weirdo one of these is the most recent for sure because I don't know I don't know how a, a yield curve being inverted in 2019 can predict predict the breakout of a, a coronavirus. Um, but I mean, you can't argue with the data here that we have tended to see a stock market fall on the heels of these inversions. I don't know if the stock market is necessarily going to fall and. I mean, the last one here, we saw an inversion for a couple of days. We saw the stock market tank for like a a few weeks, not Mm -hmm. a considerable amount of time. So while yes, the correlation is there, yes, historically, uh, inversions do tend to hit stocks pretty hard. I'm not necessarily going full boat short, but maybe I'm hedging some positions. Maybe I'm taking off some stock market longs or putting some cash on the side to get long into a, a, a stock sell-off. But that's, at the end of the day, how inversions affect stocks. But keep in mind, we've got, yes, two decades worth of data, but essentially three data points to speak to. 